Hello, this is Dean Phoenix with episode 2 of my Final Fantasy X Break HP Limit Stat Maxing series. So this is not the regular series that I've already done for when you're doing a normal HP playthrough. This is with a mind of getting 99,999 HP with the Break HP Limit ability on your armour. Now this requires a lot of min maxing as a grid, so check out episode 1 and go over the key principles. After we've already done the strength and agility that we need, you can see there we've got enough agility spheres to max those out. We also need defense and magic defense spheres. I already have some magic defense spheres if you've been doing it as we said in episode 1 because you'll have been defeating one eye. But defense spheres needs taking out tankit and that is where we needed to get some HP and agility first of all uh, before we did any of that. So uh, this is very important and so what we need to be doing is getting that strength and agility first. And then we should be able to take out Tankit no problem. We're using the Victor Overdrive mode and the character's celestial weapons, particularly uh, Riku's, Tidus's and Wakas, who we're using at the moment. And uh, if you want to make the battles go a little bit quicker, you can use those overdrives to very, very quickly mow down Tankit. Now we need 51 defense, defense plus 4 spheres to add on to the grid with the plus 4 defense spheres that are already scattered about the grid to reach 255 defense after we have cleared off all of the plus 1, plus 2 and plus 3 defense nodes which we no longer have room for on a perfect grid. So this is again using the standard sphere grid, that's how many you need. You get the magic defense spheres from one eye, so whilst you've been uh, farming Juggernaut and one eye already to get the triple AP weapons you'll also have been getting some magic defense spheres. You probably end up with more magic defense spheres than you need whilst you're in pursuit of every getting a triple AP plus two slot weapon for everybody or even just for your main characters. So for the magic defense spheres you need 47 magic defense spheres to add on to the plus four magic defense nodes that are already on the grid. So if you end up with any more than that, just remember you only want to add 47 to the grid. So for example, I had 66 magic defense spheres by the time I'd finished smashing them out. And that meant that I only had to use 47 of those. So make sure you don't put too many on the grid because you don't have that many free nodes to work with. So 51 defense spheres, 47 magic defense spheres. That's what we need. Now then we have to uh, use those to remodel the grid. So you can see here that I'm repeating these, uh, repeatedly fighting these uh, monsters and then we will have to remodel the grid. So if you remember from episode one, uh, we started at a specific point on Yuna's grid near Auto Life uh, where there's a lot of free nodes and put the strengths right there. Then we remodeled the very central area of the grid around Ultima to put the agility spheres there to take care of strength and agility before we move out into the grid at large. So now uh, then we'll be going through uh, Tidus's grid uh, which has a, doesn't have very many plus fours at all at the start so we're clearing a lot of those out with the clear spheres and then moving through the rest of Tidus's grid and using those 51 defense spheres to raise our defense. Uh, so we're going to be coming on to that in just a moment. So here is a sort of like a before and after uh, and this is when we have completed the grinding, so there I'd ended up with 66 magic defences and didn't need all of those, so only using 47 of them as you go around the grid, and 51 defence spheres to make that up to 255 with what is already existing. So after you've got that, uh, those numbers of spheres, uh, the stats that we've got left to do are HP, MP and luck. And we won't have to be raising evasion or accuracy at all. And you won't need accuracy because we'll be going for 230 luck per character. So if you have a quick there at my saves, I'm just saving to uh, look at my progress. And um, you can see that I started from this save file uh, after doing capturing, which was about 64 hours at the end of the Omega Ruins. And already we've taken care of uh, after about 66, uh, 66 hours 45, so about two and a half, three hours. Uh, we're already at the point where we can, uh, we've put the strength and agility on the grid and we can start remodeling the rest of the grid there. A quick thing, if you need to get teleport spheres to conveniently move around the grid, our strength is now easily high enough to take out Sleep Sprout, and all you have to do is make sure that you don't get ambushed. So there I've just got uh, Tidus and Waka with their Celestials, and then Orin has an initiative weapon, uh, and he's the slowest of the three by quite some way now. Uh, so he can just sit there stopping any um, surprise attacks, ambushes from Sleep Sprout, and he can very quickly knock that out to get two teleport spheres for overkill which are very convenient, you can very 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 quickly get a great number of those teleport spheres and they'll be useful for when we're moving around the grid um, especially with Yuna a little bit later on so that's how you get teleport spheres and they're very useful to get 
So as you can see here, Riku has moved all the way through Tidus' grid and the only uh, nodes that she has left in place are the plus four nodes and then she has cleared out and replaced all the rest of them. Uh, so you can see there, there's a, a strength and agility node dotted in with all of those defense nodes. But she has put in the 51 defense nodes in there and removed all the other nodes including any HP plus 200s. Uh, then you can just use a teleport sphere to go back to a different section of the grid and you can uh, very quickly fill that with magic defense phase instead. And just a quick note, you can see there, there are some magic uh, plus twos or plus ones uh, right where Riku is now. And I've left those in place because Yuna has activated those and I don't want to be getting rid of those until after I've maxed magic. So try and avoid getting rid of magic spheres if you can, uh, because it will make maxing magic slightly easier as we'll cover in the next episode. And then Riku is just going to go around the rest of this area of the grid and I've decided that this is going to be my magic defense area. And so she will again clear out anything that is not an MP plus 40, a look plus 4, uh, or, or uh, HP plus 200, so anything that's not a max node, she would just clear out with clear spheres and then fill them, replace them with magic defense instead. Now again, uh, in my game, Yuna had not been through this area of the grid, so try and keep it in an area where Yuna has not been around, so that you're not reducing her stats. The higher Yuna's overall stats are, uh, the higher Anima's stats are, and we want to keep Anima's magic as high as possible until after we have got the magic spheres that we need to max magic. Again, slightly annoying, slightly complicated mechanic, but that's that's why we're doing things in the order that we are. So again, skip over anything that is not a plus four node, and uh, get rid of those with clear spheres, and then replace them with these defense and magic defense spheres. Now the next part of the process is going to need getting uh, Yuna a weapon that she can use for the Dontondry trick to convert overdrive to AP. So you should hopefully have a triple AP weapon for her and you can bribe the Landworm which is what uh, just at the end of here and get winning formula. So you can bri bribe Landworms from Beaconel uh, and if you need money to do that you can uh, refer to my vi video about getting money from the items that you get from the Besaid capturing because you get a couple of million gil from doing that. That's a separate video on my channel. So you bribe to get 30 winning formula, assuming that you have already used 30 winning formula each to make an overdrive to AP triple overdrive weapon for Waka, Tidus and Riku. So refer to episode 2 of my normal stat maxing guide for details of the Don Tombri trick. Basically, we are going to get a triple AP two slot weapon for, for Yuna uh, from one eye when we've been getting those magic defense spheres. And then we make a triple AP overdrive to AP and triple overdrive weapon for Yuna. And then she can uh, quickly get levels from Don Tonbury. And what we're going to do is we're going to use Yuna to go from the areas of the grid that we've remodeled to have the 255 strength, higher agility. 255 defense and 255 magic defense uh, and that will very quickly raise Yuna stats which will in turn raise all of Anima's stats and in particular we're interested in Anima's agility and magic and MP so that we can use those to raise magic and get those magic spheres before we start clearing out the rest of the grid. So this is why we're doing things in the very specific order that we are. Now one of the other things that we need to do is we need to get the uh, first lot of HP spheres uh, so that uh, we can also raise Yuna's HP back to 9999 because that also affects uh, Anima and her stats. So you can see here uh, that we're going to have to take on Ironclad but we're not able to do the complete optimum method just yet so we're going to be doing a nearly optimal method instead. And this is why you must not have raised Tidus's, Tidus's luck by this point. It's very important. Make sure that Tidus hasn't gone around the area of the grid with defense. All he needs is attack and agility at this point. What you do is uh, Riku starts off the battle with her uh, celestial weapon and she will open with uh, comrade overdrive mode and frag grenade as her overdrive mixing two power spheres. Then you use blitz ace with Tidus and his overdrive mode should be set to stoic. So he uses blitz ace, doesn't matter if you hit the last hit or not. And what will happen is that Ironclad will counter, and because we've not raised his defense, it will fill all three characters' overdrive gauges. So it will fill his with Stoic, and it will fill Waka's and Riku's with the Comrade Overdrive mode. It's very important that you don't have Tidus' defense maxed yet. And then Waka can just finish it off with his Attack Reels Overdrive, and that is 2 million HP gone in a flash. 
Now, if you have perhaps missed this or done it in a slightly different area uh, order, and Tidus has maxed his defense already, just use the Victor Overdrive mode, and uh, you can just use Frag Grenade, Blitz Ace, and Attack Reels, and then uh, recharge the Overdrive by killing either Sleep Sprout or One Eye. So, not the end of the world if you have raised Tidus's defense at the minute. And we can still use the optimal uh, method for gaining these HV spheres when we are coming to do the 99,000 HP a little bit later. We'll cover that in a subsequent episode. So basically, you want to have Riku use Frag Grenade, then Tidus and Waka use Attack Reels. Preferably with uh, Tidus having Stoic and the um, n much lower defense because you've not gone through the defense part of his grid yet. Now we need 33 HP spheres at this time, so eventually we're going to need 333, but that's later and you'll be sick of this guy by then. But for now, we're just going to get 33 HP spheres so that we can get Yuna uh, back to 9,999 HP. So that Anima's stats are as high as possible for the next episode where we are going to be raising magic. Now again, the reason that we do this is because you want to keep Yuna's stats high and so keep Anima's magic as high as possible in order for us to be able to farm the magic spheres we want to get 255 magic before we go around and clear the rest of the grid. So hopefully if you've been following everything that's been going on in these first two episodes, you'll be in the same position as me, which is Yuna having her defense, attack, agility, and magic defense all sorted. And then she can go around this section of the grid, uh, which is actually Waka's section of the grid. Uh, I chose to do it with this section first. And then she can put these 33 HP spheres down. And every time she needs the power nodes uh, for activating them, you can just go and fight Kotos as you would normally. So Yuna goes through this section of the grid, deletes everything off that's not a plus 4 node or an MP plus 40. And then clears everything out with clear spheres, activates these 33 nodes, and she should be at 9,099 HP as well and then we are ready to do magic in the next episode. Now, a quick other thing that we have to cover, the enemy to get MP spheres. You really don't need any more MP than 999, and break MP limit is a terrible ability, so we never use that. You never need any more than that. So all we're gonna be doing is getting 999 MP. Now you find several MP spheres through the game, and you only need 18 in total, adding to the grid in order to have 99 Nine, 999 MP with the ones that are already there. Uh, so that's what we're going to focus on in just a minute. So you can see here that uh, Anima stats were very nice because we've got those uh, main stats all raised and that in turn raises all of Anima stats because of the way that the uh, Aeon's stat raises work. So uh, Anima is now at the point where she should have enough magic to be able to kill Jumbo Flan and do 99,000 damage with pain. And we'll come on to that in the next episode. You can see there that all those defense and magic defense spheres have been used up. I've already got 15 MP spheres there because I have killed Vidatu a little bit and I'm just gonna show how you do that in a second. So Vidatu is the enemy that gives us MP spheres. And like I say, you don't need very many of those at all. You only need 18 in total. And what I would do is make a first strike and initiative weapon for Riku. And then she can use aim right at the start of the battle. And Waka should normally be able to get in a hit and take out Vidatu in one hit. It might take you a few cracks because it is a very evasive enemy and it has a little bit of luck as well. Um, but with Waka's good accuracy and Riku opening with a battle with uh, an aim or two, depending on how many turns she gets at the start with auto haste armor, um, it should be fine. So you can see here that she uses aim and then one of the uh, either Tidus or Waka should be able to get the hit in and get those MP spheres. They need 18 of those to raise MP. So that is for a recap, strength, agility, defense, and magic defense sorted and 9,999 uh, 9, HP with Yuna and then we've got enough to boost MP by enough uh, that it will eventually be 999 as well. So we're now ready to do one of the worst grinds which is magic and that will be covered in episode 3. So thank you for watching and please like and subscribe for the rest of the walkthrough.